NC State not slowing down. At least they haven't been for the last 23 days. But in the NCAA tournament, you can. This is uh, like something that I've picked up uh, probably in the last five or six years. You can win a game in the tournament on Wednesday. You can't play it on Wednesday, but you can win it on Wednesday. Explain. How can uh, – well, okay, perfect example. Um, I was listening to a podcast with Tom Izzo recently. Tom okay. Izzo is known for his ability to take lower seeds and go on on long NCAA tournament runs. Right, this is like a, a game of game of uh, telephone, like he heard it from – he learned something from Coach K. So this has gone from, from the triangle to Lansing, Michigan – Back to the triangle when I heard it, right? This is this is like a full circle moment. Exactly. Uh what he learned is is Coach K thought about winning weekends in the NCAA tournament, not winning games. Hmm. Because he basically what Izzo was saying was certain programs, right? Winning a game in the NCAA tournament doesn't matter. It's all about winning championships. So what gives you the best chance of winning championships? You have to win the weekend and then look towards the next weekend. So what what Izzo did, and and he learned this from Coach K at Duke, obviously, uh, is like on Wednesday, he had assistants looking at the two teams they might play in the second weekend or the second game of the weekend because then they would have – if you win the first – you have a massive advantage in the second, which makes it more likely for you to play on. And and that's just one example of how you treat the weekend can affect how your weekend actually is, right? How you or sorry, how you treat the week can can set up how much success you have on the weekend. So how can NC State win their game against Purdue or win the national championship today? That's how the the best coaches that have, that have the most success that go on long runs. That's how they think about it. So on Wednesday, how can Kevin Keats beat Purdue? I think this is an obvious one. Answer this question: What do you do if DJ Burns isn't unstoppable? If DJ Burns is unstoppable, if if he is what we've seen the last nine games, where you get it to him on the post, he's pretty much a go-to bucket. At the very least, it's going to be you know thirteen of twenty for twenty-eight points or whatever he ends up with. If he's that, you know what to do. You have that blueprint all ACC tournament and NCAA tournament long. You've been playing out of DJ Burns on the post. You can go back to that, but guess what? You haven't had to do yet. Play against Zach Eady, this guy for Purdue who's seven foot four and three hundred pounds in his own right. There hasn't been somebody who, when DJ Burns leans on him, can just lean back and it's a stalemate. Right? Normally, got to get into a deep squat and push back, and and that sets him up for everything else. So if DJ Burns isn't unstoppable, I'm not saying he won't be, but I'm saying if he's not, you need a plan B. That's what you can decide today, right? That's what you could have decided yesterday. That's what you could have implemented in a walkthrough. Because up to this point, when DJ Burns has been quote-unquote stopped, it's been by double teams. And then it's the easiest counter in the world, right? Then you look at DJ Burns and say, be an elite passer, because you are. Go find the shooter. Find the open guy, right? Swing, swing, one more pass. That, that's I don't want to say easy, but simple. Right, that's more difficult than it seems. That's why a bunch of big guys that get double teamed can't do what DJ Burns can do. But he has that ability. It's a simple fix. If Zach Eady and DJ Burns stalemate each other, what do you do next? Does it turn into a DJ Horn show? Do you put in or or emphasize a bunch of things you've used this year where DJ Horn is set up for success? Is it Mo Diara? Because you're saying if Zach Eady's focused on DJ Burns, mm-hmm. that's their best post defender. Is it Mo Diara, the, your other big guy, who, by the way, has been low-key scoring like 16, 18 points in most games recently? Or is it this? And this is this is the one that I think might, might uh, be a decision they have to make now. Is the answer to DJ Burns not being unstoppable more DJ Burns? Because at, at the very least, could it tire out Edie? Good. Right? If you're just like, hey, Edie, they're, they're stalemating each other. All right, we'll rope a dope him, right? Mm-hmm. Let him tire himself out trying to stop DJ Burns, even if he's being successful in the second half. That, that Their gargantuan monster might be tired. 
and 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 if the, everything they do is built around him, there you go. I, I saw a great clip uh, from from Purdue's most recent game. Defender, it was from Tennessee, did everything right. He was fronting Zach Eady. Zach Eady was on offense. Purdue was on offense. He was fronting Zach Eady, and he had uh, wide legs, right? Great stance, wide arms, up and out, just making him like you know. Uh, by the way, I just want to clarify before I say this: I am not a park ranger, and I do not actually know what you should do in the event of a, a bear attack. But there is a certain kind of bear where you're supposed to make yourself big. Well, yeah. Make there's noise. There are certain bears. Around, there yes. are certain bears where you're supposed to like play dead. There are certain bears where you're supposed to. I don't. I, I again. I don't know. Bear spray helps. But there. Yeah. Exactly. The bear bells. Everything. Do do. I, I'm not a park ranger. Do not quote. Don't. <laughs> don't be getting attacked by a bear and be like, hey, t- Tim that, Donnelly. That Tim on, guy said. T- Tim Donnelly on the drive told me to get big. Suddenly you're looking at like a, a Kodiak polar bear combo, and you're like, ah, <laughs> might not work out well for might you. Not. But uh, but that's the position he was in. He was making himself as big as possible right in front of Zach Eady. Zach Eady couldn't get the ball. It was like a 25-second possession. It was awesome defense. You know what else it was? Wildly tiring for the defender that was doing that to Zach Eady. And you can't do that every possession because Zach Eady was just taking 300-plus pounds and leaning on the dude that was doing everything right. And you can't do that every possession. You could use that same logic for DJ Burns and say, Zach Eady might be playing great defense. But that's like, you know, sprinting the first 200 on a 400 meter dash. You can run for, you can run a record breaking first 200 of great defense. But if you can't keep it up from a, a stamina standpoint, you're not going to be able to finish the race. Anybody that's ever watched an inexperienced 400-meter dash runner knows exactly what I'm talking about. That final home stretch, it's like you attach an anchor. So Kevin Keats right now, yesterday, the day before, and his coaching staff and his veterans and his team, they are answering the questions that could decide if they win against Purdue on Saturday. And some of the staff, if you're believing in the the Izzo path or the Coach K path, should actually be deciding what they would do against UConn and Alabama. Mm -hmm. That's how you can win now. uh, They took off earlier today, right? They had their their send-off. Yep. Um, The plane ride, great time, right? Wherever the coaches sit, work on the the, the (laughs) what-ifs. It's it's – and and I said the same thing earlier in the tournament. Um, I don't I don't know if they do. Did they where where you were growing up? Did they do uh, tornado drills? Yes. Okay. We I, I I don't know why I remember. This is one of those stupid burned memories in the back of my brain that I'm never going to be able to forget. Uh, I was in in elementary school in New Jersey, and we were doing tornado drills. And and the teacher was like, any questions? This was you know, get your 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 hard back book, put it over your head, curl up into a little ball, get under your desk, all this sort of stuff, and. Uh, he said, any questions? Kid raised his hand, and, and the teacher had a uh, a cactus on her desk. Kid raised his hand. His name, actually, ironically, Zach. And I don't know why I remember this. Raised his hand and said, uh, what happens if your, uh, your cactus comes and hits us? And she was like, all right, we, we can't go through every what-if scenario. We're, we're getting deep yes. into the weeds here. And then she, she hit him with this. And maybe this is probably why I remember it. Uh, the teacher said, you shouldn't even worry. Like, you wouldn't worry about uh, a cactus on my desk. You might have to worry about a cactus on the high school teacher's desk down the street coming to hit us. Things are really going to be jumbled up if this happens. And then he raised his hand and said, what if a cactus from the high school teacher's desk hits us? And it was like... All right, wait, wait, what are we doing here? I got nothing for you. I, I was in like third grade going, we're too deep in the what if weeds here. Uh, the, the, uh, it's exactly what, what's, um, what, what I'm talking about, right? It's exactly the, the, you can't go too deep in the what if weeds, but you want to answer the big ones, right? You want to know how to get under your desk with the book, even if you're not going down into the, well, what if my lunch comes out of my lunchbox and I get stabbed with the straw? Like, you can't go too deep into the what if weeds, but you need to know the big ones, and that's how you can win a game on Wednesday. 